The Dream of Eugene Aram by Thomas Hood Read for LibriVox.org T'was in the prime of summer-time, an evening calm and cool, And four-and-twenty happy boys came bounding out of school. There were some that ran and some that leapt like troutlets in a pool. Away they sped with gamesome minds and souls untouched by sin. To a level mead they came, and there they drave the wickets in. Pleasantly shone the setting sun over the town of Lynn. Like sportive deer they coursed about and shouted as they ran, turning to mirth all things of earth as only boyhood can. But the usher sat remote from all, a melancholy man. His hat was off, his vest apart, to catch heaven's blessed breeze, for a burning thought was in his brow and his bosom ill at ease. So he leaned his head on his hands and read the book upon his knees. Leaf after leaf he turned it over, nor ever glanced aside. For the peace of his soul he read that book in the golden even tide. Much study had made him very lean, and pale, and leaden-eyed. At last he shut the ponderous tome with a fast and fervent grasp. He strained the dusky covers close, and fixed the brazen hasp. Oh, God, could I so close my mind and clasp it with a clasp! Then leaping on his feet upright, some moody turns he took. Now up the mead, then down the mead, and past a shady nook. And lo, he saw a little boy who poured upon a book. My gentle lad, what is it you read? Romance or fairy fable? Or is it some historic page of kings and crowns unstable? The young boy gave an upward glance. It is the death of Abel. The usher took six hasty strides, as smit with sudden pain, six hasty strides beyond the place, then slowly back again. And down he sat beside the lad, and talked with him of Cain, And long since then of bloody men, whose deeds tradition saves, Of lonely folks cut off unseen, and hidden sudden graves, Of horrid stabs in groves forlorn, and murders done in caves. And how the sprites of injured men shriek upwards from the sod, Ay, how the ghostly hand will point to show the burial clod, And unknown facts of guilty acts are seen in dreams from God! He told how murderers walk the earth beneath the curse of Cain, with crimson clouds before their eyes and flames about their brain, for blood has left upon their souls its everlasting stain. And well, quoth he, I know for truth their pangs must be extreme. Woe, woe, unutterable woe, who spill life's sacred stream. For why? Methought last night I wrought a murder in a dream. One that had never done me wrong, a feeble man and old. I led him to a lonely field, the moon shone clear and cold. Now here, said I, this man shall die, and I will have his gold. Two sudden blows with a ragged stick, and one with a heavy stone. One hurried gash with a hasty knife, and then the deed was done. There was nothing lying at my foot but lifeless flesh and bone. Nothing but lifeless flesh and bone that could not do me ill. And yet I feared him all the more for lying there so still. There was a manhood in his look that murder could not kill. And lo, the universal air seemed lit with ghastly flame. Ten thousand thousand dreadful eyes were looking down in blame. I took the dead man by his hand and called upon his name. Oh, God, it made me quake to see such sense within the slain. But when I touched the lifeless clay, the blood gushed out amain. For every clot a burning spot was scorching in my brain. My head was like an ardent coal, my heart a solid ice. My wretched, wretched soul I knew was at the devil's price. A dozen times I groaned. The dead had never groaned but twice. And now from forth the frowning sky, from the heaven's topmost height, I heard a voice, the awful voice of the blood-avenging sprite. Thou guilty man, take up thy dead, and hide it from my sight. I took the dreary body up, and cast it in a stream. A sluggish water, black as ink, the depth was so extreme. My gentle boy, remember, this is nothing but a dream. Down went the corpse with a hollow plunge, and vanished in the pool. And on I cleansed my bloody hands, and washed my forehead cool, and sat among the urchins young that evening in the school. Oh, heaven, to think of their white souls, and mine so black and grim! I could not share in childish prayer, nor join an evening hymn. Like a devil of the pit I seemed, mid holy cherubim. 
and peace went with them one and all, and each calm pillow spread. But guilt was my grim chamberlain that lighted me to bed, and drew my midnight curtains round with fingers bloody red. All night I lay in agony, in anguish dark and deep. My fevered eyes I dared not close, but stared aghast at sleep. The sin had rendered unto her the keys of hell to keep. All night I lay in agony from weary chime to chime, with one besetting horrid hint that racked me all the time, a mighty yearning like the first fierce impulse under crime. One stern, tyrannic thought that made all other thoughts its slave, stronger and stronger every pulse did that temptation crave, still urging me to go and see the dead man in his grave. Heavily I rose up as soon as light was in the sky, and saw the black accursed pool with a wild misgiving eye. And I saw the dead in the river bed, for the faithless stream was dry. Merrily arose the lark, and shook the dewdrop from its wing. But I never marked its morning flight. I never heard it sing, for I was stooping once again under the horrid thing. With breathless speed like a sullen chase, I took him up and ran. There was no time to dig a grave before the day began. In a lonesome wood with heaps of leaves, I hid the murdered man. And all that day I read in school, but my thought was otherwhere. As soon as the midday task was done, in secret I went there, and a mighty wind had swept the leaves, and still the corpse was bare. Then down I cast me on my face, and first began to weep, for I knew my secret then was one that earth refused to keep, or land or sea, though he should be ten thousand fathoms deep. So wills the fierce avenging sprite, till blood for blood atones. I, though he's buried in a cave, and trodden down with stones, and years have rotted off his flesh, the world shall see his bones. O oh God, that horrid, horrid dream besets me now awake. Again, again, with dizzy brain, the human life I take, and my red right hand grows raging hard like Cranmer's of the stake. And still no peace for the restless clay will wave or mole the lough. The horrid thing pursues my soul, it stands before me now. The fearful boy looked up, and saw huge drops upon his brow. That very night, while gentle sleep the urchin's eyelids kissed, two stern-faced men set out from Lynn through the cold and heavy mist, and Eugene Aram walked between with jives upon his wrist. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.